So, welcome to the Nature Journal Club. Uh, today what I want to do is to share with you folks some of um, what I think is probably one of the big unsung tricks in drawing, in drawing anything. Um, and over the last few years I'm seeing that this aspect of drawing has become more and more and more a part of my kind of fundamental go-to game about how to how to draw and sketch any subject, but especially subjects that are visually confusing. So if there is a, you know, a, a, an iris or an orchid or something that's kind of doing that flower yoga where their petals are all twisted up, or, or a goose or something that is, you can understand its structure from the side, but now it's sleeping and it's this big pile of, of gooseness. Um, how, do you, how do you go about handling that? Um, but really on any subject, this technique is going to be really, really useful. And so what I'm going to be doing today is to challenge you to, as an experiment, to, along with me during this workshop, just to, we're going to be drawing in a different way. And see if this then becomes something that you can incorporate into all the drawing that you're doing. We're going to be, instead of looking at, sort of understanding the form of the goose, here's its skeleton, and here's its... Uh, here's the feather tracks and how the feathers overlap. We're going to be looking at just sort of abstracting it to fundamental basic shapes and transferring those down to paper and what that process looks like. And we're going to get started with um, just taking a look at a leaf, a single leaf. And um, so at, for friends who are watching at home, uh, what I'd like you to do is to get a piece of paper right now and to cut it out into approximately this shape. So this here leaf, um, kind of pointy on one end, um, long, you're going to take your leaf and then take your fingers and curl it like that and so that it has a bit of an arch like that. So you're looking at you, everybody's going to want a leaf. So if you're watching at home, Pause right now and come back when you have, you've taken your leaf. Um, so, what we're going to be doing is we're going to make a drawing of this leaf. And a drawing of the leaf from this angle is really straightforward. And you know, we can go like, all right, here's my leaf. And it's got a side here and a side here. But what happens if that leaf is curling? What happens if that leaf is then pointing towards you at either straight or at a 45 degree angle or curling away from you. This now becomes a really confusing geometric shape. Um, and it's, so the way that I go about drawing it now is going to be different than sort of understanding the form of the leaf. What I'm going to be doing is abstracting this to a simple geometric shape next to another geometric shape and looking at this not as a three-dimensional object but looking at this as a set of flat shapes. The problem with doing this is that when you look out in the world because you have two eyes you see in 3D. If you close one eye you no longer see in 3D. You can see that things overlap and things further away are smaller um, or can get hazy in extreme distance but um, you're not actually seeing 3D. So 3D is your brain seeing two different images. So the first thing we're going to be doing, uh, just because we want to kind of, we want to flatten this out, you're going to, as you look at your leaf, you're going to be closing one eye. And then what we're going to do is to take your leaf, you're going to hold it up at eye level, close one eye, and point it towards you so that you see the shape of the top of the leaf, and the shape of the bottom. All right, so you can see both the top and the bottom. And what I'd like you to do is to take a really careful look at the shape of that top surface of the leaf. What is the shape of that top surface of the leaf? And first we go triangle, but then, <coughs> but then let's go deeper. What are the shapes of the corners? They flare out at the top. Are we, is anybody else seeing that? So it's not just... So the one at the bottom is a kind of straight... Yeah, yeah. But the ones... You see the top corners kind of getting more pointy? 
clearing up. Perhaps kind of like that. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. right. If you rock it way down, you probably won't see that. Tilt it up a little bit so you see a little bit coming over and you'll see these little pointy corners going off. So what I'm doing is getting myself to not think of this as a leaf three-dimensionally curving through space, but I'm going to flatten it with my brain and I'm just going to draw the shape that I see. And I'm really concentrating on the lengths of those sides and the shapes of the corners is going to help me do that. So on your piece of paper, try that right now. So don't copy this. Take yours, take a look at it, and get what is the shape of that top portion of the leaf, the, the, the triangle that you're seeing on the top. Give that a try now. Focus on those corners. the lengths of the sides. In this view, it's fairly symmetrical. And when you've got that, the next thing that I want you to do is to now take a look at the underside of that leaf. Um, what is the shape that you see there? Kind of heart shape. That's a good description of it. So it makes a little heart. There's a little heart. Now, the, the, the big trick here is, you, is not to look at this as a three-dimensional form. Instead, to see this as a flat heart shape. And what you're going to do is then draw that flat heart shape adjacent to the triangle that you just put down on the paper. Really pay attention to the shapes of the corners up here, the lengths of the different parts. So corners are going to be very, very helpful in that. So draw that shape next to that other shape. And once you've got that working for you, if you want to make this look like it's kind of popping out a little bit more, just this part right here, on that part of the drawing, kind of strengthen that line a little bit right in there. Not the whole thing, just mostly towards the tip. And that will pull that part of the drawing forward you, towards you, to make it look like it's, it's coming towards you a little bit. So that little part right there. And congratulations, you've just drawn a curling leaf um, rocking towards you in space. But notice that we got there by not drawing it, thinking of it as a leaf. We're thinking of it as a flat shape next to a flat shape. So we're, this leaf then is made out of non-leaf parts. This on its own doesn't look like a leaf. This on its own doesn't look like a leaf. We copy that shape down. We put it on the paper. We trust that it's going to work. And then you put the next shape next to the next one, and you've got the whole leaf. So now what I want you to do is to take that leaf, hold it up at eye level, and rock it so that it points over your right shoulder. So the tip of it is pointing over your right shoulder. Now look at the shape of the top of it. How, what do you notice? It's smaller. So it's smaller? It's a different kind of triangle. Ah, different kind of triangle. Take a look at the shapes of the corners. This is a big deal. What do you notice? And now we have one that flares in and one that flares way out. So one that flares in, so one is that flared in one is sort of this rounded thing, and there's one that flares way out. Um, and the, the sides are also curved. Yes. All right? So you've got one that is a very sharp point, and this one is round. Now, here's what is difficult, is your brain knows that this leaf has two sides that are the same. Your brain wants to keep it being a little symmetrical drawing. But now I'm seeing that these two corners are actually very, very, very different shapes. So I have to kind of jog my brain and go like, no, I actually am seeing that. What I want you to do is not to copy this shape, but to take a look at your leaf in front of you and to copy the shape of that top part, just that top part. What shape do you see? Is the top part flat or curved? Top is flat. Top is flat, and those other two sides, you can see that curve on them. And notice they're, they're different curves. They're different lengths. 
Now, if you are trying to do this, if you can, if you brain flattens this out, you'll be able to see it as a flat shape. And you'll be able to draw this onto the paper. If you're still trying to hold on to this as a three-dimensional thing curling towards you, your brain's going to go nuts. So don't think of this as a three-dimensional form. This is, you're now just get, copying this 2D shape. And then what I want you to do is to take a look at the shape of the underside. What shape do you see there? Underside of that leaf. It's a heart. It's a half a heart. Half a heart. All right. So one side is very curved. The other side's really straight. Surprisingly straight. Now again, notice that your brain wants to keep these two symmetrical edges of the leaf the same shape. But you're actually seeing one is curved and the other is much more straight. Hmm. That's weird, isn't it? So there's some counterintuitive things going on here, but that's actually what you're seeing. And you really have to be doing this with your own little leaf model. So give that a shot. Draw that underside shape adjacent to that top side shape. And then sit back and notice that you have just drawn a three-dimensional curving leaf pointing off at a 45 degree angle. But again, you got that complex geometric shape not by thinking of it as a 3D thing. You flatten this head you, in your head and you just do a shape next to a shape. Now if yours looks a little bit odd, um, I find that there are three big things that go wrong with this. And there are three common things that happen when people try to put these two shapes next to each other. So thing number one is you're starting to draw your leaf and you're going to draw in this bottom part and you might get something like this. Does that work? It's too fat. So it's, too, it's going to be too fat here. This side of the leaf somehow needs to connect up here. So maybe it's supposed to be like that. So, well, somewhere between this and that, right? right? Somewhere in there, but where exactly do you put that line? Here's the answer. Take a look at this one down here. This close edge you can see as one continuous edge of the leaf. The one in the back is doing the same thing. So project this line up where those meet in a curve behind the scenes is where that line is going to come in. So here, it's much too low. This would have to go whoop, to all the way up there. This one is coming in too high, and then it would have to flatten out to get there. So think of that as also just a curved line that is going to wrap into the curved corner just out of your field of view. So that positioning that bottom edge that's the big problem number one. The second problem is, is that because this is a curved leaf and your brain knows that from this angle it's an arch, here I'm seeing this top edge of the leaf as being curved, then when we go to draw it, what we want to do is to put a curve on the top of the leaf. See that? See that little bulge right there? So because I know it's a curve this way, and uh, sort of, even if I'm looking at it inside view, I want that to be curved. But what's going to be going on here, if we, you look at your, yours, that top part is actually flat. That, so that curved surface, that's a curve here, it's not this little curve here. There's no bowing up of this thing in the middle. But you'll often see this kind of creeping into your drawings. It happens to me too. And the third thing that makes these kind of weird is this whole idea of, you know, here it's the symmetrical leaf, we're looking at it at an angle, all of a sudden you have this asymmetry in it. Your brain's going to want to keep the two sides the same length, it's going to want to keep the corners the same shape. So um, what our brain will sometimes do is we try to draw that, is to try to keep these guys to be the same size and these corners to be the same shape. 
And um, if that happens, you get this thing that kind of looks like a folded leaf. So um, a fold makes a sharp angle like that. A curve like this is going to make on one side a sharp point, on the other side round. On one side a sharp point, on the other side round. So you want to, if you envision what those lines are doing on the far side, that's what you want. And so that's, that's a little bit counterintuitive. Once you've seen it enough, you'll start to see it everywhere. Um, so you're going to have three different homework assignments from this workshop, and here we've just encountered the first one. The first one has to do with this leaf. And what you want to do is get really comfortable drawing this leaf from a whole bunch of different positions, and I want you to fill up one or two sketchbook pages with just a bunch of overlapping views of this thing turned from all sorts of different angles. Look for these three kind of common... This is your brain just trying to keep the, the, the symmetry, trying to not have this thing distort the way that it actually is. And so be aware of that and see if you can draw this leaf from a whole bunch of different pictures. As you do, you're training yourself to look at a three-dimensional object and then turn that into a two-dimensional object. And again, closing one eye makes a big, big difference. So that's homework assignment number one. Um, there's something that you, that real leaves do that you can't do with this leaf very well. And that is that many uh, leaves, in addition to being curled, they're also kind of boat shaped. Right, so they're a little bit boat shaped, kind of pointing down to the, the vein on either side. Turns out that if you fold this, then it doesn't want to curve. So you can either have your, your little leaf model curve, there you go. Um, your leaf model can curve, or you can make it boat shape. But real leaves in nature will do both of those things. And so that's going to mean that those shapes are going to be a little bit different than what you're seeing with this leaf model. But still, the way that you would approach drawing this is exactly the same. So if this was the leaf that I was drawing, what I do is I look at this upper surface as just a shape. Just believe the shape. Here it's got, you can see the V in the top part of it. It's a little bit more nuanced. But you just think of this as a shape. You think of the bottom part as a shape. And then you put those next to each other. And that would be the same way that you'd approach drawing any of these. So it doesn't matter if the leaf has got the V in the top or if it's a flat plane across it. This basic idea of the shape next to the shape is how I would go about constructing any leaf from any position. So here are some photographs of some real leaves. And on this top one here, let's just take a look at that. This leaf is constructed out of two non-leaf shapes. This doesn't look like a leaf, and neither does this. But you put those together, and you've got this V-shaped top curling leaf. So what I'd like you to do is just to choose two or a few of these um, and draw those two shapes as you see them on the board. It's a little bit easier to go from, uh, from a photograph, to draw from a photograph, because the photograph has already converted this three-dimensional thing into a two-dimensional shape. But, but notice that you know, these do... Sorry, I hurt back. Um, um, look at this weird shape. Look, this, your brain doesn't want to do that. That feels really weird, because you're not seeing some big lump sticking out here. But take a look at the leaf. That's actually what it's doing. So, trust the shape. Trust the shape. Do not think of this as drawing a leaf. Get leaf out of your head. Leaf it alone. And instead, just go like, all right, there's a shape. It's going to come out here. It's going to do that. And I'm going to put it next to this other shape. Believe the shape 
and then put it next to the other shape, and you have a leaf. If you're feeling like more of a challenge, this one up here is kind of cool because it has not just one shape, but two, and then it's got this third little shape in here. Notice that this edge of this one traces down to there. That's a, that's a cool shape. For the overachievers. Believe the shape. This technique of putting a shape next to a shape next to a shape, it's not just for leaves. Um, this could just as well apply to a petal on a flower. Um, so if we were looking at an iris, like, oh my gosh, how do you draw something like that? Here's this little, this is actually technically not a petal, this is a sepal. This sepal is coming up and it's curling over. You see some of the underside, some of the top, and it's wrapped around here. It's this weird shape. How do you do that? That is drawn by putting a shape next to a shape. And not thinking of this as a sepal, but just trusting the shape. I'm just going to draw the shape next to the shape. And the same thing with this one. And you put those together and it makes this leaf. So I put those together and then once you've put them together to help sort of smooth those together, find sort of the prominent edge that links them. Well, on this one it would be this and then I'm going to follow smoothly up here. And kind of get that to be this. And then your brain goes like, oh, that's this thing flopping over. But I want to get myself to see the shape next to the shape. When you first look at something like this, your, this can turn your blood cold. You say like, you know, I'm just going to stick to drawing buttercups. <laughs> right? You can stick to drawing buttercups if you want to. Um, but how, if you did want to go about this, how would you approach it? Um, we're going to look at how you use shapes to assemble something like this. And both to get the positions of all the parts, and then to, in each one of those parts, how to assemble it shape by shape by shape by shape. And it turns out if you start with one shape and then you drew the next shape, you kind of work your way across the iris. By the time you get to the other side, at least for me, my kind of, the pieces will stop fitting very well because my scale has changed. Maybe I started drawing small and now I'm drawing large. Um, so very often I will at the start of a drawing with a non-photo blue pencil, very light pale pencil, I will block in my basic shape with a few kind of light ghost lines. In this one I'm initially going to be looking at, this thing is pretty wide on the bottom. And then there's this narrower part coming up here. These are technically the petals. These things here, those are technically the petaloid pistils of this. And then they, these are my three sepals down on the bottom. So what I would do is kind of visualize that I've got this wide bottom here and a narrower top. And if I were to transfer this to my paper, either with my graphite pencil drawing very, very lightly, or with the non-photo blue pencil, um, this would be how I would block that in. So saying that there's a big wide part and then there's a narrow part up here. So that's given me my, my sort of first piece of this framework. Now, 
On top of this, I'm going to lightly block in the location of each of these pedals and sepals and um, pedaloid pistols. With a little bit of alliteration. Um, and so I want one but I, which I call kind of the anchor shape. I want to get the anchor shape. So in this, a useful anchor shape is there's this very big prominent sepal right down here. Um, I'm going to put that in and I'm then going to build the rest of this iris relative to that one. Because it's a nice big kind of clear shape. I'm then going to be adding things on relative to its position. But I already have this framework that's going to roughly help me keep the right size of this whole thing. In doing this, I'm not worried about drawing a careful rendering of this sepal. I'm just getting a little placeholder for it. So I'm saying that sepal, it is roughly here. There's a short side and a long side. There's a medium side and a medium side. So short, long, medium, medium. But I'm not worried about getting all the nuances of these curves. It's just a placeholder. Now I'm going to draw the next sepals out here. But if I get in here and draw the sepal, what my brain will tend to do is just to kind of, it likes symmetry, and I will tend to draw them symmetrically on either side. But if you take a look, there's a big space here and a small space here. This shape of the black air between these is called the negative shape. And in drawing, looking, getting yourself, training yourself to see negative shapes is a very powerful, very useful way to improve your drawings. So uh, what I'm going to do now is, before I looked at this shape, now I'm going to look at the shape of the air next to my sepal. So I'm still looking at shapes, but now I'm looking at the shape of the air here. And I'm going to daisy chain this air shape next to this shape. So I'm going to take this one, I'm now going to attach my air here. I don't have to color in my air here, as you're seeing right here. You don't have to get in there and color that in. But this is what I visualize. I visualize this shape so that when I then block in the location of this other sepal, right, I have, I'm putting this far out, I've got Here's the small one over here, here's the big one over here. Your brain will otherwise tend to make everything symmetrical, and you'll lose some of the, 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 the wonderful nuance of, of what you're looking at. Now, I'm going to work with these, um, the, the, the pedaloid pistols that are up here. For this structure in the center, this little bevel structure here, I'm just putting two little rectangles. And these are just placeholders for these other pistols sticking up. Very often looking at these negative shapes here, these angles between them, that can also be a useful thing to key in. And the last thing that I do is then these three um, petals that are sticking up on the top. And in this, to give myself a little bit of an anchor, I'm going to start with the one in the middle, and then as I did before, I'm going to move out from that using negative shapes. So here's the location of the one in the middle, and notice that there's a small black space here and a big one here. So I'm going to visualize the widths of those negative shapes. And then block in the location of those sepals. Once I get this framed out, I'm now in a position to get in here on top of this very pale non-photo blue pencil illustration. I'll start drawing on top of that either with my graphite pencil or my pen. And because it's with this pale blue pencil, people will completely ignore that those pencil lines are there. So by the way, the pencil that I use is the Prismacolor Coal Erase non-photo blue pencil. And if you don't have one of those and you'd like to get one, I brought some with me today and I can hook you up and get a pencil in your hands after this class. For me, it's a very, very useful tool. Essentially, it's, it, just, it always makes these super ghosty pale lines. Right? So you don't have to worry about, if you did this with your graphite pencil, sometimes it's just a little bit too strong. 
But now I'm going to start drawing right over this. And for that, what I do is, as I'm looking at this sepal here, I am going to imagine that my eye is a little ant slowly crawling across the surface. And each time the surface, the edge of this shape, makes a little change in its direction, I'm going to notice, oh, I'm going a different way. Now I'm going to make, so each one of these changes in direction is a little choice of, oh, I'm going this way, I'm going this way. Sort of, you know, coming up, now down steep, look, out a little shelf, and down again, in a big flat slope, down a drop, over, you know, not quite 45, up pretty steep, up to a corner. So each one of these corners, each one of these line segments is a separate decision. And what you want to do is to get your brain to notice all of those as you're kind of filling in this shape. And if your drawing ends up being a little bit different than the thing that you're looking at, that's totally fine, because then that flower's going to wilt, and nobody's going to know. Um, but I find it actually really does help to talk these corners out loud. So I'll be there kind of mumbling to myself, like, I'm coming out over here, and it's here, and then it's a little bit of a jogger, which makes me kind of an irritating person to sit next to um, while I'm doing one of these drawings. But it works for me. Now, I can drop into really any part of this. But what I tend to do is to work on things that are closer to me and do the parts of this flower that are the closest first. Then, as I'm going further back in space, I'll be tucking other parts of the flower behind it. Um, so I'm going to start up here on this sepal. And here is the top part, this upper surface of this sepal. And notice it's coming to a sharp point, like we saw with that leaf on that kind of, remember how that leaf was curling around? It wasn't going to a sharp corner, but it was kind of going out to that tapered end. We have the same thing going on here. And then I'm going to draw the part of this sepal that that's attached to. And then any part behind that, there's a little part that was sticking up here. All right, so boom, boom, boom. And a shape next to a shape next to a shape. So I'm building this up just by looking at what are each of these little flat shapes. And the same thing's going to happen over here. That's a shape next to a shape. Up here, it's the same thing. Can you guess which one of these I did first? Whatever one is first, I do that first, and then this one just stops where it tucks behind. And then here are these guys. I'm not seeing any really confusing wrinkles in them, but one little shape next to shape right here. For these guys back here, this petal here, I saw is actually sort of three different overlapping shapes. I don't know if you can see this um, from where you're sitting, but this piece here has one section here, there's another section coming up like this, and then there's another little section up there. So that's going to be constructed with shape number one next to shape number two next to shape number three. So it's a shape, and you just believe the shape that you see. Again, closing one eye really helps you be able to visualize these as flat shapes. You want to flatten them with your brain. And here's shape number two next to shape number three. On the other side, it was two shapes and one in the middle. So this entire iris was constructed by just putting a shape next to a shape next to a shape next to a shape. And instead of getting lost in the three-dimensionality of it, I'm able to track across this complex shape by following each one of those as a little nugget. Once I've got those lines out, and I want to start filling this in, now I let myself see it as the three-dimensional form again. So when I'm drawing in the detail on it, and those lines are going to be following the curves and the contours of petals or sepals, I want to now be thinking of this as a three-dimensional shape. Or if I'm putting in values in color, I want to be thinking of this 
as a three-dimensional shape. And I'll put this up on my website as a step-by-step -step so you can sort of see each one of those shapes. But this overall, overall form, I flattened it with my brain and drew those individual shapes. For me, that's a lot easier than like, how do you draw some complex three-dimensional thing that's rising and folding and all twisty-twisty. So we look at a subject like this. You can see parts of this that, look at this, run right here. Not coming up, there is a shape next to a shape next to a shape next to a shape. Here's another shape. So I would look at each one of these as next to this big crazy shape. <laughs> it's a lot easier to do when you get to trace on the board. Right? Um, but what I would like you to do is just notice that you can deconstruct this into non-iris parts. So my order of operations would be first to sort of lightly, loosely kind of get the overall shape of this thing and then place, you know, here's number one, here's negative shape number two. I'm going to place this. So you kind of, with your non photo blue pencil, you're very loosely scribbling out the positions of these different elements. Then you put your non photo blue pencil down, you pull out your graphite pencil or your pen, and now you're going over that shape. And not thinking of it as a three dimensional form, just it's a shape next to a shape. Can you imagine how you would enter into this? If that feels intimidating, can you imagine how you would enter into this? This little piece here. Because we're going to try that right here. <laughs> um, on this iris, First, just take a moment to appreciate the beauty of negative shapes. Look at those, right? Look at the shapes of the white in here. So completely different from each other. So totally different. But your brain is going to want to make it uniform, right? You're going to want it. It's going to want it. Your brain is going to make this too symmetrical. But you start really looking. There's some wonderful. This is my favorite one right here. It's this little upside down shoe. Right, kind of the subliminal foot <laughs> makes you kind of like, you know, I'm just looking at this iris. For some reason, I want to put on pointy shoes and lay on my back. Um, but let's think about how you would kind of go about blocking this down. What I would probably do is have some sort of big box down here for this, sort of boxing that in, and with a, 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 a cone of some short sort kind of coming out. There's no one way to, to put in these sort of starter lines. Uh, 20 different people will do it in 20 different ways. So you don't have to go like, like, what are the right lines for this? There are no the right lines. But you do want to initially get the rough positions of things. And then I would block in this shape. Then I would block in this negative shape. And then I would block in this thing. So my, as, after I kind of got this one blocked in, I'm now thinking about what is going on next. Now, once I've got that negative shape, I've actually drawn half of my next bit. So I can use those to incrementally go across this structure that I've already created. But if I begin just over here with this shape and start putting shapes across here, very often it's not all going to fit together when I'm, I'm done at the end. So, Give this a try, and you can do one of two things. Either pick some portion of this that you think has some interesting shapes, and put that shape next to that shape. Um, or you can also start by kind of lightly blocking in how you would create the overall iris moment. What are the map, sort of the mega shapes for that? Um, whichever feels to you like a more kind of useful entrance into the skill that you want to refine right now.
but do play with these negative shapes. And you will see that when you're looking at the pedal, you're so distracted by the detail of the pedal, you really cannot see the edge as well. And if you're having a hard time seeing this at home, just go online to Google and type in, um, type in um, iris into Google image search and a bunch of iris will pop up and choose one that you think shows a number of these shapes really well and um, give it a try with that. Or maybe you've got one outside your house. It is easier to start with a photograph because that's already converting this three-dimensional thing to two dimensions. Eventually we're going to be out there with three-dimensional flowers. Feel yourself thinking about shapes. The goal of this is not to draw this flower the way you normally do but to make yourself really feel the shapes. Look for the shapes. If you're still working on sort of blocking in the big picture, just, we're not going to have time to finish this, um, but just choose one part and kind of slow down now and on top of that framework you put in, put in that shape next to that other shape and just sort of see what it's like to think of this not as a sequel, just as, as a shape, just as a shape next to a shape. Try some portion of this and construct it with a shape next to a shape. This approach is not just for leaves and flowers. It's for anything that you look at that is visually confusing. If I see a bird and I've studied a lot about bird anatomy, um, that anatomy and structure that I know and understand can be uh, a great way of initially kind of launching me into a drawing with it. But if I'm looking at something and it's not kind of intuitively making sense to me, or I'm not really familiar with it, um, you are out here, here's a, a silverback gorilla. And this does not look to me the way I think a gorilla's arm should look. If you said draw a gorilla arm, I would not draw that shape. I wouldn't draw that as a leg. But from this position, this little gorilla, like that doesn't feel like a gorilla head to me. But what I did is I just looked at this gorilla as a set of shapes. And I drew one next to another next to another. This on its own doesn't look like a gorilla, sh a gorilla arm but you have to trust it and put them together and it will make your gorilla. So the gorilla, again, is made out of non-gorilla elements. We've got a big bean here, this weird lumpy hat shape, this I don't know what, um, but you put those shapes together and you can build something. I was out at a pond and I was, I was looking at a mallard duck and I've drawn a bunch of mallard ducks, and um, from memory I can draw one from the side, but this one was pointing straight towards me, and it was up out of the water, and it was sleeping, so its head was tucked back into its feathers. And parts of its body made these really weird shapes. I looked at its duck head, and this did not feel like a duck head to me. It looked like this weird lumpy thing. So I decided to use this shape next to shape approach to be able to draw that. Um, so here's how that kind of looked. I started with this general posture, 
and then put in a non photo blue pencil oval of here's its body, roughly this wide, and its head is in here. And now the shape next to shape part starts. I look at its head, and the head again looks nothing like, well, it looks like this. That does not look like a mallard head to me. Right? That looks like the little puzzle piece that Curious George swallowed. Right? And I'm looking at this like, I, you know, but you just gotta, you just gotta believe the duck. Don't go with your idea in your head of how a duck head should look. From this angle, I'm seeing this weird thing. I'm just going to draw that. That's now my duck head. It has this big brown spot on its tummy. I'm going to draw that, not thinking of it as a brown spot as a tummy, but what is this shape? It's a little bit more pointy at the top. It's coming down here like a little teardroppy thing. It had feathers on its back, the scapular feathers, but from this angle, they just looked like a couple of bumps back there, and I just drew the shape of that bump. I don't have to understand structurally what's happening back there, but it's that bump. And then, here's the edges of my duck. This little brown spot had these little wings kind of sticking out on it. And then it was standing up. I could see it. So what I did is I drew the shape of the air between its little duck feet. And when I did that, it got the sort of balance and relative position of those legs for me. So this is the shape of the air. So not looking at, if you're looking at the foot, this isn't looking at the foot, this is looking at, this is the shape, the negative shape between these legs, and that places my legs for me. And that makes a sleeping duck. So that doesn't look anything like a mallard head for me. In the context of this, it works. But, um, if you kind of get into like how should how do you draw a mallard head? How should that look? Um, it'll just send you down the wrong tube. So for anybody who's kind of got their feathers all wrapped up or their neck kind of contorted in some way, this sort of shape next to shape next to shape, you can use it. So here's drawing a this is drawn on some gray paper, so I can use my non-photo blue pencil, it's a little bit too pale. Uh, but you can see some graphite lines there in the back. And here's my, again, this really short beak, this, this heron was looking away from me, that feels wrong to me. But I'm just going to believe it. Here's the shape of its throat, the shape of its shoulder, back. So I'm just adding pieces to this one at a time, not thinking how should this look, but what is that shape that I see. So here's this real shape next to this shape. And that constructs my bird. Um, here on this little bird, it's at this very foreshortened position. Look at the shape of this tail. That's going to be hard to draw. This tail kind of at a 45 degree angle and it's foreshortened. How do you go about drawing that? I can't draw that tail, but I can draw that shape. Don't look at this as, can you see this just as a shape and not a tail? Ignore the bird. Ignore the bird. There's no bird here. That's just a shape. If you can do that, you can assemble this thing piece at a time. But just like I did with, the, um, with that iris, it helps to lightly make a little bird sketch at the start. Right? You know, here's, here's your bird body, you know, here's the, the, the head, you know, what the tail's doing, just so that as you're putting pieces in, they're going to be the right size and proportions relative to each other. So you drop those kind of guidelines in, you check your proportions, then you can start working, this is a shape, this is a shape, this is a shape next to a shape next to a shape next to a shape. Um, so if I did that with this little bird, I would start with my kind of light, kind of ghost shape up there, just to work out my proportions. And then here's this shape of the head, top of the head, next to, it's got this cool little helmet thing. Its body is very boxy. These wings on the side don't look anything like wings to me. From the front, this, this one over here kind of looks like a humpback whale coming out of the water. <laughs> right? but. So I'm not thinking of that as a wing. I'm thinking of that as a little humpback whale shape. 
Um, here's, I love the air underneath, um, uh, between the branch and a bird's foot. And then you can place the feet around that. The shape next to a shape, next to the shape of the tail. So you put those together and that carves your bird. Um, remember how we, we said that it's important to kind of block it in at the start? If you don't block it in at the start, by the end it's going to have goofy proportions. Mm -hmm. Another thing that can happen is if you block it in the start, but you don't stop and double check your proportions when it's just lightly blocked in, you will get a drawing like this one. Which when you look at the real thing, you go like, this one has a much broader head. See that? All right. At this point, there's nothing that I can do except put it in Photoshop and kind of pull that out if I wanted to. But, see how that's got a much more, mm -hmm. this guy, real bird, eh. Yeah. The place for fixing that isn't at the end of the drawing. It would have been catching it as you went into it. So that being said, give it a try with this bird. My challenge for you as you're drawing this wing over here, do not think of this as a wing. Think of this as a shape that curves around, comes down straight, up, straight like this. So it's a shape. Don't think of it as a wing. Think of it as a shape. There. Almost all the photographs in this show um, come from the website of uh, Vivek Kanzodi. He is a member of the Nature Journal Club and he maintains a website called birdpixel.com. And um, he's invited all of us to kind of go over there to Bird Pixel and to use his photographs as reference material for. Um, for drawing our, our, our birds. Actually, that's, that's where all my bird pictures from. I've got those irises just by doing a web search for iris. Um, but the, um, I encourage people to go there to, to his site for uh, catching some, uh, getting some really useful photographs for practicing different aspects of drawing. When you get to that tail, really look at this as, as a shape. It is, not, it is not the tail of a bird. It is a shape. You had a question? Do you know what kind of bird this is? It's a shrike from yeah, Africa. An African shrike. Okay. It, it looked shrike-like, except yeah. the bill looked a little wrong. But. Yeah. There's this incredible radiation of shrikes in Africa. Um, out here we've got two shrikes, two species of shrikes. There, there's a just there's there's shrikes, 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 and shrikes. Yeah. Similarly with uh, kingfishers, just gazillions yes. of types of kingfishers. Are you able to convert part of this to shapes? It, it feels different. Your brain wants to draw the wing, but just as an experiment, see what it's like as you're doing that to drop it in as a, uh, as a shape. Once you kind of get this guy lightly blocked in, your challenge on the head here is to just assemble it like puzzle pieces. Here's a little piece next to another little piece. Like, you know those big wood block puzzles that children do? You first kind of get the general shape of it, and then you're going to put each of these little pieces in 
as a shape next to a shape next to a shape. When you, when this approach really starts to click for you, sometimes it, you get a little bit of that jigsaw puzzle satisfaction. You'll sort of get a little piece and click. It'll set in next to click this other piece. Click. It'll go in. It's a really different way of looking at any object. Another thing that really helps with this bird is looking at the negative shape around the outside edge. And you notice that a lot of birds have real corners. If you over round your bird, you miss those corners. So you can actually think of this guy as flat, 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 flat. And those angles. Um, do a really good job of giving you some of the, the attitude of birds. If you over-round your birds, uh, especially if you're starting putting down a couple of circles, we tend to get these really over-rounded birds and they lose a bit of the, the life of, of, of the bird. So, so those spots, the shapes inside, have angles, corners. So you can carve those Carve those into your bird. Try one more like this. What most people would tend to do is to draw the body of the bird and then draw the edge of the white mark. That's different than thinking of the black thing also as a shape. What people like to do is draw the beak and then they would draw the line between here. You actually want to think of that as a shape, as that as a shape, that zone as a shape, that's a shape. That's a shape. All these different interlocking shapes. So we're going to have three pieces of homework. One piece is to fill up a couple of journal pages with sketches of that paper leaf. The second is to go outdoors and find a real leaf with a little bit of a V in its top and a curl to it. Bring that uh, into the shade and sit down and do several drawings from different angles of that leaf, showing the top and the bottom. As you do this, your big challenge is to get yourself to, to turn this entire thing into a flat shape. To a flat shape. Next to a flat shape. The final one is to find several subjects that you think lend themselves to this approach of, of drawing a shape next to a shape next to a shape. And to 
uh, make four drawings where you're really playing with this idea of interlocking shapes. Now, the way that you're going to think about how you draw this is different if this white part down here is also its own actual shape. What a lot of people do is they would, anything that's white, you don't see that as a shape because that's your paper. This is a shape because it's the black thing. But this is actually a shape. And I want to get that shape next to a shape next to a shape. Whatever it is, do four drawings where you play really intentionally, look for, and play with those shapes. And you will find that the way you start to see objects and start to bring them down to paper, you're going to have this other toolkit that can come in whenever things get really confusing. So you absolutely can do this. You can do this. But give it time, play with it a little bit, and you will find that this is something that you can do. Um, it is... Uh, oh, this, this isn't from uh, Bird Pixel. This is a wonderful photograph that I found online, and I don't remember who the photographer was. But uh, this is one that is not from Bird Pixel. Um, but you see something like this, you start to play, if you, can, if you don't know where to even start with this, well, there's a shape. Right. I'm going to put that, the little, so it looks like Africa. All right. I'm going to put that down on my piece of paper. There's another shape that is next to it. There's a shape in that. There's a shape next to a shape next to a shape. It gives you this incredible other toolkit to play with how you would approach any of these drawings. There's no one way to do this, there's no right way, but often if you intentionally force your brain to do some sketching that is outside of your regular routine, you can adopt techniques and things that can really expand your ability to observe something and get it down onto a piece of paper. Um, with those three exercises, so number one, the, the leaf study, the number two, leaf study number two with a real leaf, and number three, finding four images and playing with those. You do that, you will get in shape. Right, so, my challenge for everybody is to uh, think of this as your shape workout. You're going to get in shape and um, play with these. You can do it. And I also want to encourage people to post on our Nature Journal Club Facebook page some of the shape studies that you're doing to motivate other people. Look, we can do this and sort of it's neat to see how other people are approaching the same sort of thing so I would like to encourage people to please share those online um, so thank you very much I hope that this workshop was useful to you and that you gain some tricks in your quiver of how you can approach some challenging drawing situations this approach of shape combined with understanding the structures of what we see that's my fundamental kind of go-to method for how I draw anything that I see thank you Thank you.